Hey guys, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to learn about how capacitors act in circuits. By the end of the video, you'll be able to solve problems involving RC circuits. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start by drawing the circuit symbol for a capacitor. It's nice and easy. It looks a little bit like a battery symbol, and we'll get into why, because of course, like batteries, capacitors can hold charge. Um, but whereas our battery symbol has one long and one short uh, line, our capacitor symbol has two lines that are identical. So again, anytime you see two, line, two parallel lines that are the same length, you know you have a capacitor in your circuit. So let's start by talking about what happens when we have capacitors in a series. So of course, we're looking at a circuit like this one. We've got a resistor, two capacitors, and of course our battery. So whenever our capacitors are in a series, the equivalent capacitance can be found by adding our capacitances as though we are adding parallel resistors. So what I mean by that is one over the equivalent capacitance in the series is equal to one over the capacitance of my first capacitor plus one over the capacitance of my second capacitor and so on and so forth for however many capacitors I might have. Now, you might be a little annoyed because adding resistors in a series is super easy and adding capacitors in a series is much harder. Well, thankfully, there is a silver lining here, and that is we have our capacitors in parallel. So, for example, like so. We can actually add the capacitors of our, the capacitance of our capacitors. Sounds a very silly sounding sentence. We can add the capacitance of our capacitors as if they were resistors in a series. That is the equivalent capacitance of a set of parallel capacitors is equal to the sum of the capacitance of each individual capacitor. So C1 plus C2 and so on and so forth. So you might think, are we in Australia? Because everything's upside down. Well, it really is. Everything is upside down. We are used to resistors where adding resistors in a series is easy and adding resistors in parallel is hard. And with capacitors, it is the exact opposite. So it's going to be really important for you to remember as you're going through these that capacitors and resistors are exact opposites when we talk about finding the equivalent resistance or equivalent capacitance of a circuit. So let's go ahead and do an example. And in our example, we're going to need to find the capacitance of the circuit below. So, we know that this is a series circuit, and therefore, 1 over the equivalent capacitance of the circuit is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the, of the capacitance of each individual capacitor, or 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Plugging in our numbers, we can see that 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over 5 times 10 to the negative 6th plus 1 over 20 times 10 to the negative 6th plus 1 over 10 times 10 to the negative 6th. And guys, this is your reminder, of course, that this funky looking M here stands is, is the Greek letter mu and stands for t micro, which means that we're gonna multiply our number by 10 to the negative sixth, um, so that we are looking at our equation in farads instead of microfarads. Now, when I put all that in a calculator, I get that one over CEQ is equal to 350,000. Thus, the equivalent capacitance of my circuit is equal to one over 350,000 or approximately 2.9 times 10 to the negative 6th coulombs, or 2.9 microcoulombs. And there you have it, guys. I have solved for the equivalent capacitance of this nice, simple series circuit. Of course, it'd be much easier if they were in parallel now, wouldn't it? So now let's do a slightly more complicated circuit and find the capacitance of the circuit below. So in this circuit, we have a piece of our circuit that is in parallel. And then that whole parallel component 
is in, a ser is in series with another capacitor. And as with resistors, we want to start by breaking down that series component, that kind of smallest component of our, of our circuit before working up to the circuit as a whole. Now, if we had had another capacitor in a series with, for example, this 10 microfarad capacitor, in that case, I would want to start with that, with finding the equivalent capacitance of, of uh, this piece here, and that before moving on to the bigger parallel in series. Of course, I don't have that, so we don't have to worry about that. But just, just again, to summarize, when you have a complex circuit, you want to start with the smallest possible piece of that circuit. So the part of the circuit that is least likely to be, that is the least affected by, uh, that is least likely to affect other pieces of the circuit. That took me a little bit to get to say correctly now, didn't it? Let's go ahead and uh, move on to solving this, series, this circuit though. So for our parallel component, we know that the equivalent resistance of our circuit, or excuse me, the equivalent capacitance of our circuit is just the sum of the individual capacitance of each capacitor in the circuit. Therefore, for that parallel component, um, my equivalent capacitance is 10 microfarads plus another 10 microfarads or 20 microfarads. So that is gonna be the equivalent resistance for this first red component of my circuit. Now, of course, I need to figure out the equivalent resistance of my whole circuit. And in that case, and, and so what I've done, guys, is by finding that red component, I am able to erase this piece of my circuit here and replace it with that equivalent capacitor um, with that capacitance of 20 microfarads. So again, two capacitors in parallel is exactly the same as one capacitor. Um, so, or sorry, two 10 microfarad capacitors in parallel is the same as one 20 microfarad capacitor. So now it's a lot easier for me to find that uh, the full capacitance of my circuit because it's easily written as a series circuit where one over CEQ is equal to one over C1 plus one over my red CEQ. And what that gives me is that one over my equivalent capacitance is equal to one over 10 times 10 to the negative sixth plus one over 20 times 10 to the negative sixth with that 10 to the negative sixth, of course, coming from the micro part of microfarad. So when I sum together the left side of my, the right side of my equation, I get that one over CEQ is equal to 150,000. And of course, I want to take the reciprocal of that to get my equivalent resistance, which is 6.7 microfarads. And there you have it, guys. I have figured out the equivalent resistance, uh, equivalent capacitance of a slightly more complex circuit. So let's go ahead and talk takeaways. So our first takeaway is that capacitors in a series are added together like resistors in parallel. So one over C equivalent is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2 and so on. Whereas with capacitors in parallel, we are going to add those together like resistors in a series. So my equivalent resistance is equal to C1 plus C2 and so on. And the lesson we learned is of course, the world is now upside down and you have completely new rules to learn, but I, uh, I'm sure, I am sure that all of you guys are capable of doing this. Um, so go ahead, try solving some problems with capacitors in a circuit and see where that gets you. Best of luck and happy solving.